Next part of the discussion is versatile nature of carbon. If you go for the versatile nature of carbon, actually it was Berzelius. Berzelius was under the opinion that any organic compound any organic compound is living in nature and uh, and uh, compounds and all inorganic and all inorganic and all inorganic compounds are non living in nature non living in nature but this concept of berzelius was given a death blow and uh, according to the berzelius he is under the opinion that he is under the opinion that because living living uh, substances are organic in nature and non living substances are inorganic in nature any organic compound if it is living in nature then that living in nature for the organic compound is studied in the form of vital force theory this was studied in the form of vital force theory so berzelius was under the opinion that any substance if it is organic in nature it is living in nature the living in nature of an organic compound is according to the vital force theory that means a substance if it is having certain amount of force in it that force is expressed in the form of living nature of the compound so all organic compounds they are living in nature because they have some vital force theory based on the vital force theory they are living in nature but if you go for all inorganic compounds they are non living in nature so because they don't have any vital force in them they are treated as non living compounds according to the berzelius he was under such opinion but this opinion was given a death blow by by bart frederick wola frederick Frederick Wohler he gave a death blow to vital force theory he gave a death blow to the vital force theory and uh, he discovered he discovered first organic compound Frederick Wohler has discovered the first organic compound organic compound from ammonium cyanate from ammonium cyanate that is nh4 c and o ammonium cyanate according to frederick wohler this ammonium cyanate this ammonium cyanate when uh, it is subjected to isomerization subjected to isomerization upon heating it gave that is nh2 co nh2 this is called urea and this is ammonium cyanate apart from urea and um, apart from urea many other organic compounds also they were synthesized in the laboratory other compounds other compounds synthesized is formic acid acetic acid alcohol and so on these are some of the compounds which are synthesized in the laboratory these two compounds are synthesized in the laboratory these two compounds are synthesized in the laboratory formic acid and acetic acid so the next part of the discussion here apart from the synthesis of organic compounds in the laboratory and first organic compound which was discovered by the frederick wohler actually this carbon is given a special status in the organic chemistry because the carbon is an element which is unique and we have studied its properties in the earlier discussion 
Now, if you go for this carbon, if it is so unique, it is also showing one important property called catenation. Catenation, if you take catenation, if you take uh, that is interlinking, interlinking of carbon atoms in straight chain, either in straight, either in straight, either in straight or branched chains. Branch of chains is simply called as that is catenation. Now, if you go for catenation, car for carbon catenation is unlimited because as already I told you, interlinking of carbon atoms either in straight chain or in branch of chains is called as catenation. If you go for catenation, carbon has the tetravalence property of showing the catenation. It is tetravalent. It can it can uh, interlink itself in the straight chains like this or it can go in the form of branched chains also it can go in the form of branched chains also like this there is no specific condition for the carbon it can interlink in either way this is called interlinking of carbon atoms either in straight chains or in branched chains so there is no limit for the catenation power of carbon but if you go for other elements for example phosphorus if you take phosphorus it is P4, if you take sulfur, it is S8. So, catenation power Cp, catenation power is 4 for phosphorus, catenation power is 8 for sulfur. That means the maximum catenation power, if you go for nitrogen, that is N3H, hydrozoic acid. Hydrozoic acid, its catenation power is 3. So, therefore, if you take the decreasing order, decreasing order of catenation power if you take catenation power if you take carbon has more catenation power carbon has more catenation power if you take carbon has more catenation power than uh, that is for sulfur sulfur has sulfur has more catenation power than phosphorus so for carbon for carbon the catenation power is unlimited for phosphorus for sulfur the catenation power is 8 and for phosphorus the catenation power is 4 so therefore the element with highest catenation power is carbon and it is proved by the interlinking in the three dimensional pattern here